It is here, the Victorian Romantic Tarot. Now, it did, does come in two versions. One is kind of a standard, I guess. And then the other one is the massive deluxe version with extra cards and whatnot. Today, we are going to be looking at the standard version of the Victorian Romantic Tarot. I did buy a bag, which is unrelated to this, but uh, we'll show the bag. If you had not not have their bags, you are missing out on quite the experience, that is for sure. So, here is the box. Now, this is a quite a unique box. It is uh, unlike anything I've seen other than the Chiro Marchetti box. It does have a little latch that opens up here, and obviously you open it up and you get the sealed version of the Victorian Romantic Tarot, which I have taken out, just so I can take a look at the cards and uh, see what they look like and whatnot. That is a beautiful box. That is very rare to see something like that. So here we go. It's got comes with a little bit of a book. So you have the majors, the minors, and whatnot. And we can dump out the cards and see the back of this. Here's the inside of the box in case you wondered what the inside of the box does look like. And there it is closed again. So let's take a look at the cards for the Victorian Romantic Tarot from Baba Studio. I'm a big Baba Studio fan. In fact, I have every deck they've ever made except for the Alice in Wonderland. I don't know why, they just didn't do it for me. Uh, just not something that I was excited about uh, on that. But let's take a look at it. Uh, all right, Baba Studio, the Baba Store. Okay, so here is sort of the cover card. And again, there is the back. Um, okay. And so we'll look at the Fool. Now this does not have the fancy edges. This is the standard version, which contains just the standard edges. Uh, it does have a little bit of a border, but it's not too intrusive. And card quality is, I mean, it's, it's kind of standard, it comes to here. This is pretty much what you get with Baba Studio. I do see some warping eventually on the cards um, over time, but obviously it's fixed by shuffling them and whatnot. So this version does have a bit of, uh, I mean, you sort of see that sheen and that glimmer coming off of it, which I think is kind of cool. So there is the Fool and the Magician. So this is a reprint, so we do sort of see that the same cards that we have seen before and whatnot. High Priestess um, looks very cool. Uh, yeah, the Empress. It's one of the most beautiful cards of the deck, in my opinion. I think the Empress, I know in a lot of the old boxes, they'd have the devil as the uh, sort of the picture or the representative on the box, but I think the Empress really is one of the better cards in here, one of the most beautiful cards in here. Anyway, and it does sort of look just fantastic. This is a culmination of just amazing artwork combined with just production quality galore. Uh, very, very good at what they're doing and they're very sort of practiced and, and definitely one of the premier places to get a tarot deck. Uh, I don't know how many orders they had, but it was a lot. It had to be a lot, and rightfully so. It's difficult to get their decks. You pay a lot on the third party market so when you can get it, you get as many as you can. The Emperor, and you can see that sheen again, that glimmer on the car, I love it. Hierophant, very cool. And then you have the uh, Lovers. Again, one of the better cards in the deck. I love the greenery, just how sort of muted it is. Uh, sort of pixelated almost, as far as, you know, sort of the details. The Lovers, again, gorgeous, beautiful. Just everything about this deck is magnificent. Uh, the Chariot is here as well. It looks great. I love the eeriness to the cards. Strength, of course, always a beautiful card. And then we have uh, the Hermit. So the Hermit is uh, very cool. So I love the muted greens. It's like not very green at all. Very muted, very subdued. Everything is very sort of relaxed there. And we have the Wheel of Fortune which is bringing the crown. And we have the Justice card. Again, one of those. I love the color combinations as well. Sort of the blue with the bright red and whatnot. Then we have the Hanged Man or maybe the Hanged Woman. And then we have Death card. 
I love that, sort of carrying the skull and whatnot. So this is my, I don't know if this is the third reprint, or no, this is the third printing, I'm not really sure. Uh, I do know that I had the, f I know that my tarot teacher had the first printing, and that's where I kind of fell in love with it. And then I picked up, I believe, the second printing, and uh, this, this may be the third printing. Let me know. Anyway, the devil pretty much on a lot of the bags that we get and whatnot that uh, contained the devil. And I think the original, uh, the second edition that I had, had the devil on the front of it. We have the devil alternate, which is kind of cool. I love that. That's kind of wild looking. I don't think I remember seeing this before. Very cool looking. Uh, then we have the tower, pretty much sort of a sea, sea bearing, um, it's an accident, sort of a something going on there, sort of tied up. The waves are coming in. The star, and then we have the moon. The moon is always beautiful. The moon is always beautiful. I love the sheen and the glimmer on her hair and whatnot. We have the sun, which is just vibrant, beautiful greens, sort of contrasting with the muted greens and the earlier cards. The overall, it's just really, really good. Beautiful, beautiful deck. Like, if this is the first time you're seeing this, you're in for a treat. I mean, definitely there. Judgment as well. Look at the bright vibrance on that card. Just sort of jumps out of the card. The graphics do. The world, again, beautiful, gorgeous. And the Ace of Wands with the very sort of muted but high-lit sections in there. And we have the Two of Wands, which is underneath here. There we go. We have the Two of Wands looking out, scanning the Dominion and seeing what's new there. Three of Wands looking for the future and trying to see what could happen. We have the Four of Wands and then the Five of Wands. There we go. Very, very cool indeed. Sort of like the potential fight. The aggression is sort of there, but it's not quite there yet. Six of Wands, the Lord of Victory. And very bright yellow, very pretty indeed. And then the Seven of Wands, the defensiveness from that. And now we have the Eight of Wands, the movement, the action, the very forward momentum we have here. This is going to be pretty much, I mean, as a default for any romantic readings, I would reach for this. And I'm going to do that again. So the, I bought several of these. So this is my, my used copy. This is a copy I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go forth and have fun with it and read it on the stream and whatnot. I think that's the important part there. Then we have the 10 of Wands, the holding the baby, sort of the predicament that she is in. And then you have the Page of Wands, sort of standing there very alert. The Knight of Wands, relaxed, talking to someone else. And then we have the Queen of Wands with a small dog instead of the cat. Because, you know, sometimes you got to have a dog instead of the cat, maybe. Uh, or that's a very ugly cat. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. King of Wands is up there playing the musical instruments and whatnot. And then we have the Ace of Cups. I like the King sort of play or someone sort of, I don't know. It just feels like that there's more here going on than we realize. Like they're not just listening in. They're not just listening in. Uh, they're sort of either participating or very uh, lost in thought there. I like kind of that. Ace of Cups, almost like a mermaid feel, but not um, sort of out of the, I guess out of the shell. And then the Two of Cups, very, very pretty card as well. Three of Cups. Then we have the four. I like the four, sort of focused on that one individual. I like that. In the party, sort of a subdued individual, like doesn't want to be paid attention to. We have the five of cups, the disappointment, the sorrow. And then we have the six of cups in here with the uh, greetings and whatnot. And the seven of cups, riding along, almost like you're being pulled by a boat. And we have the Eight of Cups, the disappointment, the leaving, the exiting, which is very cool. Then the Nine of Cups, sort of uh, the celebration and the drinking. And we have the Ten of Cups with the party and the family and whatnot. And then the Page of Cups. 
Interesting combo there. It'd be great if it would stay. It'd be great if it would stay. There we go. Okay, so now we have the Page of Cups. Looking back at us, and a little bit of a harp action over there. So, kind of interesting. Okay, Knight of Cups, Mr. Romance himself. Getting all of the attention, indeed. All of the attention, not just some of the attention. 100% of the attention. And we have the Queen of Cups coming in through there. The Water of Water with all of the extras involved there. King of Cups celebrating, sort of drinking, getting a little bit of wine in them. And we go to the Swords. All right, the Ace. Always interesting, like a little either fairy or angel or whatnot, sort of there. It sort of reminds me of sort of may maybe Renaissance art from Michelangelo and, you know, sort of that kind of thing. I think that's kind of the theme of this, obviously Victorian being the subset, but it does kind of remind me of that era. Three of Swords with the, oh, the definite sorrow involved there. Four of Swords, the resting with the uh, thing sort of hanging on here. Uh, that doesn't look alive. It looked like an accessory. Five of Swords being in there. Then we have <laughs> sort of everybody focusing on this one individual. Six of Swords with the ride and the longer ride that's involved in there. Seven of Swords, the escape, the exit. We have the Eight of Swords. Then the Nine of uh, yeah, the nine, sort of, you know, on the precipice of the, just sort of, you know, I'm on the edge, I'm on the edge, so I'm either sneaking out, or I'm being a little bit emo, or I'm thinking a little bit too much of, uh, bad things and whatnot, and then the ten of swords, blending in with this individual on the beach, I thought that was always very cool, page of swords, and have you seen all of these cards before, probably? So this is maybe a repeat. And then the Knight of Swords, the action, the movement, and whatnot. So then we have a Queen of Swords, very serious look, indeed. And then the King of Swords, very solemn, downtrodden, sort of, you know, had a better, has, we've had better days. Then we have the Ace of Pentacles. Again, the dance, the relaxation, the fun and whatnot. So I don't know how long it takes to make each card, but it had to take a very long time <laughs> to make each of these cards. I think that's why I kind of appreciate it so much. It does remind me of sort of the Victorian era. It does remind me a lot of, you know, also sort of pulling aspects from the Renaissance. So I think it's that combination that really sort of brings me in and makes me feel that uh, so it's not too realistic. I kind of thought that the Alice in Wonderland deck was a bit too realistic, but, and this one has that, that dances, that line between realistic and not. Um, but yeah, that weird look from the Four of Pentacles as well. Kind of got to put up with that weird look there. All right, Five of Pentacles, not having a good day at all. Very sort of downtrodden here. And the Six of Pentacles, the giving aspect and all that. We have the Seven of Pentacles growing the garden. And then the Eight of Pentacles working on the, uh, yeah, working. <laughs> working. Somebody watching you. Somebody watching you work. Nine of Pentacles, always a good time. Never boring. And the Ten of Pentacles with the happy home, happy family, with, you know, holding holding on to our melons, because uh, holding on to your melons is very popular nowadays, and maybe back then as well. Page, very eerie look. Reminds me of Versailles. Reminds me of some of the rooms in Versailles. Uh, Knight of Pentacles, holding on. Very serious look with that. And the Queen of Pentacles, sort of helping out, instructing with the kitty on the floor. And finally, the King of Pentacles, always a welcome sight in any room. All right, so obviously, obviously, it's a, not a cheap deck. Not a cheap deck. It's hard to get a hold of. Uh, basically, you pre-ordered it very quickly or you didn't get it at all. It's just one of those decks where once it's at a certain point of the pre-order, you're not going to get it. So, I mean, I think they have a couple of decks extra that they're using to fulfill orders and whatnot. We do have an extra card in here. Now, I know in the super deluxe version, they do have uh, nine extra cards, according to the update that we got. 
So I did pick up a bag from them. I, I mean, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I have about nine or 10 bags already, but I wanted this one. I mean, it's like while they're sending it, I wanted this bag anyway. So here is the bag. It is substantial, it is beautiful. I mean, everything from Baba Studio is amazing. They have clothing, they have bags, they have all sorts of stuff. They have decks, they have books. So you can get one of everything in there. And it came with a three of coins card, which I thought was kind of cool. Anyway, so there is the haul from the Victorian Romantic Tarot. Again, I got a few of these. I got some just to hang on to for collector's items. And uh, this one I'm gonna be using daily on the stream. And I gotta say, I'm pretty hyped about that. So that is the Victorian Romantic Tarot. Let me know what you think about the brand new version. I'd love to hear your opinions on this. Thank you for watching. Uh, please hit like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.